Let us begin our celebration of love and thanksgiving in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the joy and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. To prepare our hearts to remember and give thanks, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Father of everlasting goodness, our origin and guide, be close to us and hear the prayers of all who praise you. Forgive our sins and restore us to life. Keep us safe in your love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. As the Israelites felt the hardness of desert life, they grumble against Moses and Aaron. This passage narrates how God provided for their needs by sending them quail and the mysterious food called manna, which foreshadows the Eucharist. A Proclamation from the Book of Exodus The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert, to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day, the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus, will I test them, to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning, you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes, like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. What we have heard and know, and what our fathers have declared to us, we will declare to the generation to come, the glorious deeds of the Lord and His strength, and the wonders that He wrought. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. He commanded the skies above, and opened the doors of heaven. He rained manna upon them for food, and gave them heavenly bread. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels, food he sent them in abundance. And he brought them to his holy land, to the mountains his right hand had won. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. 
In this brief passage, Saint Paul speaks of the radical change that a person must undergo when one becomes a member of the Lord's mystical body, the Church. A proclamation from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus that you should put away the old self of your former way of life corrupted through deceitful desires and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth the word of the lord thanks be to god Alleluia alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us open our minds, open our lips, and our hearts to the reading and the living of the Holy Gospel as written by Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do, that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. And whoever believes in me will never thirst. My dear friends, what we heard is the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magandang araw po. Naalala ko yung lolo ko noon. Pag nagkukwento siya sa akin, ang madalas niyang simulang sabihin ay noong unang panahon. <laughs> ang ibig tukuyin po noon bago ang Second World War. Hmm, parang pwede na rin natin gamitin niya ngayon na. Pag sinabi kong noong unang panahon, ang ibig ko pong sabihin ay yung time bago mag-pandemic. Pwede, pwede, di ba? Kaya noong unang panahon, Pag kumakain ka sa isang diner o restaurant na hindi impressive ang food, hindi mo gaano maalala ang food trip experience mo, di ba? Pero na lang kung may langaw sa soup mo o may totoong tuwalya sa karikari mo. <laughs> Kaya may excitement din naman mag-explore ng mga lugar kung saan merong masarap na food. Hmm. At madalas madidiscover mo na there is no place like home. Lalo na ko ang cooking ni mommy is always sprinkled with love. 
then you stop looking around then you stop complaining then you start counting your blessings ngayon grateful ako dahil masarap po magluto yung mga kasama ko sa convent eh. and with love and passion ha sabi nga ng isang Pinay sa Amerikanong kaibigan I invite you to eat our house <laughs> I invite you to come home for meals at ito ang contentment there ni Jesus sa misa natin ngayon there's no place like home Nung unang panahon, may narinig po akong kwento. Ibabahagi ko now sa inyo. Once upon a time, a stone cutter was working near the side of a mighty rock. As he stood to pause from his hard labor for a minute, he observed a local landlord and his party pass underneath the shade of the trees nearby. When the stonecutter saw this rich man in all his comfort, his work suddenly felt heavier and harder to him. Oh, if only I were a rich man, he sighed, how happy I should be. Suddenly, a voice answered from the mountain, your wish is heard. A rich man you shall be. When the stonecutter returned home that evening, he found a magnificent palace where his hut once stood. The poor man was nearly beside himself with joy, and in his new life the old one was soon forgotten. One day, while he was leisurely making his tour in his carriage, he felt the sun burn sharply on his face. He thought to himself, the sun is powerful. Even his riches cannot prevent it from scorching his face. The stone cutter then wished he would become the sun itself, and immediately it was granted. As the sun, he felt mightier than all. His light stretched around the entire world, and his rays shone on kings and fishers alike. But as he burned bright in the sky, a cloud moved in front of him and obscured his sight. What is this? He wondered, a cloud is mightier than me. Oh how I wish I was a cloud! And a cloud he was and he lay between the sun and the earth. He caught the sun's beams and held them, and for days and weeks he poured forth rain, till the rivers overflowed their banks, and the crops of rice stood in water. Towns and villages were destroyed by the power of the rain, only the great rock on the mountainside remained unmoved. What is this? He cried, a mountain of rock is mightier than me. Oh how I wish I was that mountain of rock! and that rock mountain he became, and gloried in his power. Proudly he stood, and neither the heat of the sun, nor the force of the rain could move him. This is better than all, he said to himself. But one day he heard a strange noise at his feet, and when he looked down to see what it could be, he saw a stone cutter driving tools into his surface. Even while he looked, a trembling feeling ran all through him, and a great block broke off and fell upon the ground. Then he cried in his wrath, Is a mere child of earth mightier than a rock? Oh, if I were only a man! And the mountain spirit answered, Your wish is heard. A man once more you shall be. And the poor man was content to remain, a stone cutter for the rest of his life. Ay naku, if we have 10 reasons to complain, there are certainly more than a hundred reasons to be grateful. And yet, we are a people who love to complain. A part of the 5,000 who were fed followed Jesus to his retreat to Capernaum. Pero may remark si Jesus sa kanila. Jesus says to them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. <laughs> Nasabihan niya ang mga wala nang ginawa kung di maghanap ng community pantry. Meron ang community pantry up eh. Tapos, they compared Jesus to Moses, daring him to produce more convincing signs. Kaya nasabi tuloy ni Jesus ang key verse na ito sa John 6.35. I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Hmm. Isang kaibigang pari na lumaki sa probinsya ang nagbanggit na tuwing umaga yung kanilang dalawang kalabaw daw tulad ng dalawang baka sa picture natin would always stick out their heads between the barbed wire fences sa kanilang grazing pasture. Eh bakit? They are always trying to eat the grass outside the yard. <laughs> Very daring daw. Kasi ang grass always looks greener at the other side of the fence. Hmm, karabaw perception nga talaga. Pero, parang lahat naman ng kahayupan niya ata ay ganun ang pananawa. Ngek. Kasi discontentment says, the grass always looks greener at the other side of the fence. At hindi lang kamalayan yan ha, meron din kasing pagkilos na katumbas yan. Alam niyo po dyan sa Laguna noong unang panahon. Pag nakarent ka ng isa sa mga dikit-dikit na home resorts for rent, di ba? In the middle of your stay, masisilip mo yung kabilang home resort sa bakuran. At madalas, masasabi mo, Aba, mukhang mas maganda yata yung kabila ah. <laughs> Nakaka-relate ka ba? Pero tingnan natin ang sarili natin, mga kakaibang uri ng kalabaw ha. There is always a temptation even for us human beings to think that others are better than I am, that others are more fortunate than I am, that God loves them more than He loves me, that they have all the blessings in the world while I have all the reasons to complain. At alam niyo, to the point ang sabi ng isang Dominican German theologian, philosopher and mystic, si Meister Eckhart. Kilala niyo ba yan? Noong pang 12th century. Sabi niya, Some people want to see God with their eyes as they see a cow. To love Him as they love their cow. They love their cow for the milk and cheese and profit it makes them. This is how it is with people who love God for the sake of outward wealth and inward comfort. They do not rightly love God for their own advantage. Wow! Piercingly true. We have a strong message from St. Paul in his letter to the Ephesians in the second reading. Ang sabi niya, I want to urge you in the name of the Lord not to go on living the aimless kind of life that the pagans live. You must give up your old way of life. You must put aside your old self which gets corrupted by following illusory desires. What St. Paul is trying to tell us is that it is our illusory desires that make us want to complain. And again, all these illusions are but caused by our short-sightedness. The closer we are to being blind, the greater is our desire for visual, material, physical signs. That is why Jesus dares us to live in contentment, content with the fact that we have Him, our bread of life. Paano kaya naman natin magagawa ang bearing move na ito? Ito po ang mga suggestions ko. Una, discard your emotional cancers. That is, the four big C's huh, in your heart. Number one C, discard your comparing attitude. Kaya ka malungkot, eh, wala kang ginawa kundi i-compare ang sarili mo sa iba. Number two C, discard complaining. Parang guilty rin ako dyan, ha? madalas. Pero dapat baguhin ang attitude asap. Pinsan kasi yan ng unang cancer cell ng comparing. In fact, minsan, kaya ka nagko-compare ay para ka makapag-complain. Di ba? Number 3C, discard criticizing. Hehe, of course, yung unhealthy, unnecessary criticizing lang. ha. Minsan kasi ang feeling mo, mas matalino ka at mas magaling ka kaysa sa iba. 
dahil sa intelligent criticizing attitude mo. Mas maganda kung hahanapin mo muna yung dapat mong i-affirm sa mundo, sa anak mo, o sa ibang tao. Ayun ang banggitin mo muna para kapag nag-critic ka na, tunog affirmation din ng criticism mo, di ba? Mas magaang sa tenga at sa puso, di ba? At yung number 4C, discard competing behaviors. Ayan kasi ang stage 4 cancer na papatay sa katawan at isipan mo. Stress at anxiety and a host of other symptoms that will certainly affect you physically, spiritually, morally, and relationally. Meron nga mga anak na nakikipagkumpetensya sa kanilang mga magulang eh. Pambira. Kasi wala nang bukang bibig ang mga magulang naman kung hindi i-compare ang sarili nilang successes or failures sa successes and failures ng kanilang mga anak. And I tell you, devastating ang results niyan. Ang ikalawang daring move to take up the challenge of Jesus is to affirm. Affirm your blessings and thank God in prayer. Tingnan mo rin kasi as blessings yung hindi ibinigay ni Lord sa iyo. Bakit hindi niya ibinigay? Kasi mas alam niya ang needs mo more than you will ever know. Kaya kung marami siyang hindi ibinigay sa iyo, marami rin siyang blessings na inilaan para sa iyo. Ang ikatlong daring move to take up the challenge of Jesus is to renew and revive. Renew and revive your faith in Jesus and His promises and let His loving promises lift you up. Eh, kailang ka ba huling nagkumpisal? Kailang ka ba huling nagparticipate without distractions ha, sa online mass natin? Hindi nakaka-revive ng faith kapag ka nagsisimba ka online habang nagluluto ka, ha? Kahit may love pa yung lutong bahay mo. Alam nyo, meron nga nagbanggit na isinisingit niya ang online mass kapag may CR break siya. Naku po. Kaya pala dalawang oras ang simba. Mahiyahayaan naman ikaw. At ang ikaapat na daring move to take up the challenge of Jesus is to embrace Embrace an abundance mentality. Di ba ang tanong sa atin last Sunday, ano ba ang laman ng lunchbox mo? Ano ba ang baon mo for this life's journey? Kakapusan? Discontentment? Unfulfilled dreams for your life? Complaints? Kapatid, hindi ka kinakapos. Pero kung pera ang fulfillment mo, eh may problema lahat tayo dyan. Yung ang sumusweldo ng 500k a month ay suicidal eh. Kasi kulang daw ang sahod niya. At baon siya sa utang. Naku po. Walang katapusang paghahanap ng pera. Instead, we are advised to embrace an abundant mentality. Have a kaya natin to Lord mindset. Workable ba yan? Abay, syempre. Utak mo yan eh. Puso mo yan eh. Lunchbox mo yan. You are responsible sa laman ng lunchbox mo, remember? And the good news, my friend, is this, that God recognizes this short-sightedness that we have. You want a more visible sign? You want a more physical sign? I give you my son in flesh and blood. But like the Jews in the time of Jesus, All our illusory desires have kept us blind to the very person of Jesus Himself. Jesus repeats the good news for us in the Gospel this Sunday. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures. And what Jesus is saying can be summed up in a single sentence. The human heart has a hunger and thirst that nothing on earth can satisfy. It is a lesson that we must learn if we are ever to find true happiness, fame and fortune, all the wealth in this material world promised to fill the void, the hole, the emptiness in the human heart 
But in the end, they leave the heart more hungry, more thirsty, more short-sighted, and even more complaining than it was before. For as long as I can remember, there was just my father and me. Working nights often took its toll on poor father. I could never be angry with father for long. He knew just what to do to cheer me up. As I grew older, getting what I wanted became less easy. This was hard to understand, especially for a young lady on a first date. was a generous man beyond his means. But the greatest gift he ever gave me was the gift of love. Contentment is not the fulfillment of what you want, but the realization of how much you already have. And the greatest gift we all already have is the gift of God's love through Jesus, His Son and our Savior. And he alone suffices. Sa pagtatapos, let me share with you this quote from St. Teresa of Avila's bookmark. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing dismay you. All things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. The one who has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us lift up to God our prayers. After every petition, we shall say, Living Bread of Life, hear us. Living Bread of Life, hear us. For the Catholic Church, 
the pilgrim people of God. May she bring her faithful to the heavenly kingdom, as the visible instrument of the love of the Lord, who cared for the Israelites in their journey in the desert. Let us pray. Living Bread of Life, hear us. For the Holy Father, the bishops, and all other spiritual leaders, as dispensers of God's manifold gifts, may they always nourish and strengthen their flocks. Let us pray. Living Bread of Life, hear us. For those who are attracted by our consumerist world, may they overcome the allurements of material gains, and work for food that gives eternal life. Let us pray. Living Bread of Life, hear us. For our parish priest, Father Nanette Legaspi, and for Father Arnold Aline Dayu, Father Jeremiah Arguelles, and Father Louis Pa Nilong. May they enjoy good health, and experience the solidarity and affection of all parishioners. Let us pray. Living Bread of Life, hear us. For all priests, may they grow daily in their commitment to Christ the Good Shepherd, so that they may lead with pastoral love the flock entrusted to their care. Let us pray. Living Bread of Life, hear us. For all of us, may we discover anew the grace that comes from our faith, in the love of the hearts of Jesus and Mary, and be transformed into a people with Christian morality and integrity. Let us pray. Living Bread of Life, hear us. That your people everywhere, may continue to hold fast to you in these times of pandemic threat, brought about by COVID-19. Let us pray. Living Bread of Life, hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Living Bread of Life, hear us. Father in heaven, faith in your Son Jesus is your gift to us. Help us to put our trust in Him ever more completely, that His life in us may grow from strength to strength. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, which earth has given, human hands have made, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away, O Lord, my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray now, my dear friends, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, our loving Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Merciful Lord, make holy these gifts, and let our spiritual sacrifice make us an everlasting gift to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to be right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by His birth He brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by His suffering cancelled out our sins 
by His rising from the dead, He has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, He has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Roberto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, well, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Coming together as God's family with confidence, we call on our Heavenly Father in the words of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not allow us to fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The love and peace of Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us joyfully offer each other the sign of love and peace. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, my dear friends, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus grant us healing and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Panis vivus et vitalis, hodie My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul, since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you gave us the strength of new life by the gift of the Eucharist. Protect us with your love and prepare us for eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer our prayers. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the abundant spiritual blessings you bestowed upon us. We are grateful as well for the material blessings no matter how abundant or scarce they are, for our stewardship. We pray in your mighty name to break any evil seals and consecrations, curses and spells, unholy ties, links, evil relationships and bondages that had been cast to, made over, or forged through the material and monetary blessings we receive, own, and keep. Help us remember that these are given for your glory and for the greater service of the Church and of humanity and we ask you to bless all our relationships. These are yours, O Lord, and we submit all these under your most glorious authority. Amen. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers, that they may minister to the sick, with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times, to work for the good of all and to help those in need. 
May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calunsod, pray for us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, loving and serving the Lord in one another. Thanks be to God. Palapakan natin ang Panginoon. Ha 
ko kapansanan ko lahat